Coming up on Extended Play, we go to the sleepy, creepy town of Silent Hill to find out how they put the terror in survival horror. The Mistress Elvira endows us with her survival wisdom. And get your garlic out. We scour the blood banks for the latest crop of vampire titles. Stick around. It's game time. Welcome to Extended Play from Paramount's Great America in Santa Clara, California. I'm Kate Patello. And I'm Adam Sessler. Now, there are a million things out there that scare us. Ghosts. Monsters. Big hairy spiders. Clowns. Oh, totally. But you know, one of the main reasons that people go to see scary movies or they play horror games is because it's fun to be scared, within reason. Now, one of the scariest games of the year is unquestionably Konami Silent Hill 2. So how did this follow-up to the original Creep Fest turn out to be so scary? Well, we went to Konami and found out. In my restless dreams, I see that town, Silent Hill. Silent Hill 2 is one of the most terrifying games ever made. How does one create such a masterpiece of horror? We venture to Konami headquarters, 2x4s and flashlights in hand, to find out. In terms of art, you know, of course uh, we uh, uh, took uh, Jacob Slaughter as a uh, reference and David Bench and uh, David Cronenberg. I think a lot of the horror that goes into the game is that it's a very real, a very common place. It's somewhere you could go to and visit yourself. It's a familiar background. It's just another town in America. The horror doesn't come from the town itself, but from what people create themselves, what their own feeling is and how they project it onto the town. And then there's the main character, James. He's not exactly the action hero type. We set the uh, main character as a normal person. You know, he's, li he's like a living, uh, you know, neighbor next to uh, our home. Excuse me, I... <gasps> oh, I, I'm sorry. Naturally, I, I uh, people has, uh, you know, scared. lots of uh, emotional incident in their life. And uh, we plan to uh, make together their life and uh, their, you know, normal days and then horror you know that means that uh, horror suddenly impact uh, like a usual days. silent hill 2 excels at immersing the player in its creepy little world so what elements are key in creating that effect <laughs> one of the common themes running through silent hill would be the fog fog effect and how it closes in upon you and creates your own world around you. Sound has uh, so much power, you know, in terms of Silent Hill. You know, we, we decided to uh, use the sound to make you know, people cry and make, make uh, their emotions. Laura? Okay, I guess I won't open it. The first concept of uh, Silent Hill is to stimulate humans more primitive instinct. Leave us both the hell alone! What we've gone out to really try to do, to create a scary image. I mean, we don't want to just jump out of closets and say boo and scare you. It was to have that subtle feeling of something's wrong. I don't want to know what's around the corner, but I'm kind of compelled to. It's out of morbid fascination to see what's around that corner. Nine out of ten times, there's nothing going to be there. But you've already built up that tension in yourself so much that you're afraid to look around that corner. People feel something about, uh, you know, old things, even though it's, uh, you know, house or furniture, in a, in a door, whatever has a history. People, you know, put something, his emotion in it, finding that kind of thing is our job. A job the folks at Konami are clearly very good at. So, what scares Sato-san? Yeah, every time I'm, I'm scared of a budget and the deadline. <laughs> oh, deadline is uh, just, uh, you know, in two weeks. Perhaps Silent Hill 3 will feature the unspeakable horror of sleeping in a cubicle. Any final thoughts for the players out there? Silent Hill 2 is about the experience. 
the players, I think they want to uh, feel fear, feel uh, scary. I think uh, they will be uh, satisfied. Coming up on Extended Play, we review the gothic survival horror title Alone in the Dark and get cool with Dante and Devil May Cry. Devils never cry. Go to techtv.com. Get the best of Tech Live. Keep up with the top stories. The race is on to reach new medical breakthroughs. Product reviews and tech features. So let's hook this thing up. Tech Live, online all the time at techtv.com. Welcome back to Extended Play. Survival horror is the best known form of fright-filled gaming. And the series most associated with that genre is Resident Evil, although it actually started with a different series, one that's attempting to rise again. Alone in the Dark, the New Nightmare was the one that started the whole game goth movement known as survival horror. But unfortunately, this reincarnation is another Resident Evil clone. <laughs> You can play either Edward Carnaby, a guy that wears a trench coat so you know he means business, or Aline Sedrak, a girl geek without the glasses. Luckily, this game isn't about making friends. Look, just try to stay calm. It's all about sending paranormal punks to hell. Combat lacks depth. Just point and shoot, shoot, and shoot. But one innovative weapon is your flashlight. If you find a locked door, you need a key. The puzzles are uninspired. The graphics are beautiful. Its sparse lighting creates a dreadful atmosphere, but luckily, you have a flashlight. This ghost-busting game sounds like a low-budget horror film because of its hokey voice acting. It's awful. Come and get me. I'm begging you, come quick. And repetitive music. Overall, Alone in the Dark, the new nightmare is not too shabby, so we give it a 3 out of 5. If you're looking for good survival horror, remember the GameCube will have both a full remake of the original Resident Evil as well as the long-awaited Resident Evil Zero. Speaking of Resident Evil, that series creator, Shinji Mikami, has now moved on from battling zombies to warring with monsters with a neo-gothic, metal 80s type of twist. Seems like a logical evolution. Devil May Cry begs the question, what's the point in saving the world if you can't look cool doing it? You play Dante, a demon exterminator for hire, whose current job involves the investigation of a ruined city on a faraway island. As you move Dante around the island, you'll be given various assignments, including item fetching, escaping an area within a time limit, and of course, boss battle. Devil May Cry's cool factor comes into play when you're fighting. Every time Dante attacks, he gets a rating, ranging from dull to stylish. Everything from the pseudo-gothic architecture to the enemy character designs are highly detailed and take full advantage of the PS2's hardware. This is where you will die. The situation-sensitive battle music helps to immerse the player. Trish, devils never cry. Where sound does suffer is in the audio mix. There are times when the dialogue gets drowned out by both the music and the sound effects. Dante, help me! Devil May Cry undeniably overflows with coolness from beginning to end. At its core, though, the game is simply a kick-ass action game. With top-notch controls, innovative camera techniques, and stellar graphics, it's a standout release. Extended play gives Devil May Cry a solid four out of five. It looks like we have a winner. Jackpot. How about that Dante? He's cool. Now, one of the best ways in the world to learn how to type must be with Typing of the Dead. I mean, it's scary, it's fun, it's educational, and it's violent. What more could you ask for? How about a cheat code? Oh, don't forget, you need a keyboard. Now, where'd I put mine? It's somewhere in here. Like, hey, quit it. Quit. God, haunted houses. Hi, my name is James. You're about to start some serious training. Okay, James, let's go. I'm sure that you already know that touch typing is a technique whereby you type without looking at the keyboard. 
Adam, are you listening? This is what happens if you can't touch. Ah! 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 I think you get the picture. Okay, or you can use cheat codes. First, crawl over to the password screen. Enter K I K M A H P. You'll unlock unlimited continues. Unlock all drill mode levels. Unlock all boss mode bosses. And unlock the versus CPU mode. Let's hurry, Gary. Now you'll have an edge on beating. I am Goldman. I am Goldman. Coming up on Extended Play, we hear them scream in Aliens vs. Predator 2. And we sink our teeth into the latest Legion of Vampire games. Welcome back to the Screen Factory at Paramount's Great America. The Alien film series is one of the most adapted into video games, with the best of the bunch being Aliens vs. Predator. That game was championed for its tense atmosphere and some of those frightening gameplay in ages. Though it did have its problems, a poor graphics engine, no storyline, and a hard multiplayer interface. Now all of that's been changed for the sequel, and it picked the right season to scare us silly all over again. My bad. Six weeks ago, the Wayland yutani Corporation lost contact with a research facility on LV-1201. We're here to find out why. Yep. Futuristic space people never learn. Thankfully so, because we get to play Aliens vs. Predator 2. Following the original PC game's format, you play three different storylines. As a colonial marine, a predator, and one of those nasty, nasty aliens. All three scenarios have benefited from cohesive storylines that eventually interconnect. New abilities, like the alien's talent to pounce long distances, and the predator's use of his powerful legs to leap, bring the game more in line with their cinematic ancestry. Furthermore, the LitTech engine improves the look of the game considerably. What the hell is that? With vast outdoor environments and complex indoor detail, gone is the oppressive soot that marked the original. This standout nope. technical achievement is the sound. <laughs> Using familiar motion detector beeps and the menacing trill of the predator, you'll keep your ears attuned and jump at every noise. Where the game succeeds and ultimately hurts itself is that the marine levels are far superior to the other two. Once again, the game recaptures the constant anxiety and doles out genuine scream-out-loud shocks when the bugs set themselves upon you. The use of exhilarating scripted sequences make you feel like you're on a funhouse ride that you hope never ends. It does, though. And while the alien and predator levels do offer some thrills of their own, like playing the facehugger in search of a human host, they lack the desperate sense of purpose characterizing the marine scenario. Despite the narrative backbone, they descend into rampages of bloodletting that eventually become uncomfortably sadistic. That said, the decidedly robust multiplayer redeems the game. With a variety of character classes within the species and game types that include both deathmatch and more mission-based team play, the AVP2 package is more than rounded out. It is worth noting that maps are extremely large and benefit from several players. Aliens vs. Predator 2 has moments that are so good that you'll feel it when it falls from those highs. But if you want one frightening time and some strong, unique multiplayer, there's nowhere else to look. We give it a 4 out of 5. You know, aliens are a very modern monster, but if you want to go the classic route, there's always vampires. Fortunately, there's not just one vampire game coming out. There's a whole crypt full. <laughs> Ever since Bram Stoker wrote about our favorite count, or maybe even before that, humans have been attracted to the mythology of vampires. Dracul the devil. Whether it's fascination with immortality or just the fact that the buggers like to suck our blood, we're smitten, or more appropriately, bitten. Even the game world likes the vampire, and why shouldn't we? First of all, the monsters are undead, and we like the undead. Second, they're pretty invincible, unless you happen to have a wooden stake handy. Thirdly, they usually have cool powers, like being able to turn into other animals, for instance. But enough talk! How about you? 
And in the long history of vampire games, we've seen some decent titles. Russia, you are worthy. And some not so decent titles. Ah, yummy. Feed me more. However, if you're tired of these moldy oldies, this season's crop of new releases promises plenty of fanged heroes and anti-heroes. Who shall live and who shall die? In Vampire Night, you play a gun-toting vampire hunter who must save the local townsfolk from an undead menace. The game comes with light gun, and instead of slow-moving zombies, your enemies strike vampire fast. Legacy of Cain Soul Reaver 2 begins where the cliffhanger of the original left off. Just like the original Soul Reaver, the sequel has lots of puzzles, though they've been overhauled. You can expect conundrums of a whole new variety this time around. Given the seedy nature of Nosgoth, Raziel will get into plenty of battles with both the living and the undead, which means you get to use his Reaver powers for wicked means. Blood Omen 2 is the fourth installment in the Legacy of Cain series. Cast him in. It takes place before the events in Soul Reaver and stars a younger and less powerful Cain. Ultimately, his quest to reclaim his honor in Soul Reaver means lots of fast-paced combat. Despite being a youthful vampire, Cain still possesses some awesome powers. From Dusk Till Dawn is a third-person action title based on the movie of the same name. <sighs> You play Seth Gecko, the George Clooney character in the film, and essentially your mission is to escape from jail, clobber bloodsuckers, and of course, stay alive. So there you are, a slew of new titles to get your, uh, blood pumping. Now gather up your garlic and crucifixes, turn down the lights, and prepare to enter a world that's gone completely bad. Those bloodsuckers just got Lisa, and you had a chance to save her. I'm pulling the plug on you before you do any more damage. Breaking contact. Coming up on Extended Play, Luigi's going ghost-busting on a GameCube. Hello. And Elvira's got tips to help you get through even the most frightening of horror titles. Keep that itchy trigger finger under control. Welcome back to Extended Play. Now, many people have noted that with the launch of the GameCube, we're not going to have a Mario title. But there will be one game that will be kept within the fraternal order. Well, you know, the whole reason Mario doesn't have a launch title is that he's lost in Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. Got ghosts? Who are you going to call? Hello? That's right, Ghostbusters. Mario's been kidnapped. But you can Mario. rescue him with the help of his brother, Luigi. Mario! <laughs> Armed with a vacuum cleaner, Luigi must solve puzzles and battle those who have gone beyond. And there's plenty of fun along the way. <laughs> Luigi's mansion sports some 90 rooms full of ghostly nasties. You'll use your vacuum cleaner and your flashlight to clear the paranormals. Mario! Graphically, Luigi's Mansion is impressive. We've seen our 2D heroes from the NES and 3D before, but the GameCube really brings out all of their plump glory with detailed facial expressions and character movements. <laughs> Luigi's flashlight shows off the GameCube's graphical capabilities, and the sound adds to the creepy yet cartoony atmosphere of the huge haunted house. Luigi's Mansion looks to be a must-have at the GameCube's launch on November 18, 2001. Nice, doggy. And now, the whole trick to a survival horror game is, you know, surviving. And we thought you might like a survival guide. Well, who better to bring it to you than the woman who has lived through many a cheesy horror bee flick herself, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. <laughs> Do the words Resident Evil, Silent Hill, and Half-Life strike fear in your souls and make the hair on your arms stand on end? Do you continue to find yourself trapped in corridors surrounded by a horde of flesh-eating zombies with only one bullet left? Are you constantly ambushed by various ghosts, ninjas, monsters, and other various mutants ending your game before you can even make it to the first safe spot? We'll have little fear gamers. 
In our quest for gaming knowledge, Extended Play headed down to Not Scary Farm and got some surviving tips from a bona fide expert in this ghostly genre. Someone who has survived the horror Hollywood industry for over 20 years and still looks fabulous. Hello, darlings. It's me, Elvira, Mistress of the Dark, and here are my tips on surviving a horror video game. Y'all ready for some Elvira? Hint number one. When you hear the scary music, chances are you're gonna be attacked. Keep that itchy trigger finger under control. Instead, fight only when you have to. This will conserve your ammunition for the head bad guy. And don't be a wuss by conserving your first aid kit. You're gonna need those later on for sure. This looks bad. Search a room thoroughly. Destroy all baskets. And be on the lookout for secret trap doors. You'll never know what you'll find. It looks like we're the only ones who survived. We should work together. Don't trust anybody. Even cute girls can be possessed by the devil. I should know. All bosses have a weak spot. Don't give up. Keep hitting in different places with different weapons. You'll be bound to find their weak spot. The big boss never dies easily. Do not approach him until you are sure that he's dead. Elvira doesn't take no crap from anyone. That's mistress to you, Wade. I'm generally kicking, hitting, um, throwing knives, wh whatever I can do to survive. I'm pretty straightforward when it comes to kicking people's butts. We've got a few extra minutes with the Mistress Elvira on our website, so come by and check it out. And get ready, because coming up soon, we're going to have two exclusive shows on both the Xbox and the GameCube before they launch. We would like to thank Paramount's Great America and the Scream Factory for hosting us here. By the way, the Scream Factory is open through Halloween. You want more info, check out their website. And now that does it for our show for this week. So, until next time... webs and the eye and the eye and the sticking. Ah! Ah. Come help us! Oh, real popcorn. Oh, floor corn. <laughs> now I must join with the divine and realign them. Virtuary!